everyone, welcome to Movie News, three times a week, starting now. Tuesdays, unless this goes up very early Wednesday, but it'd still be Tuesday on the West Coast, and as long as it's still Tuesday, America, somewhere, that's all that matters. I hear you sighing at me. Anyhow, I am joined <laughs> with my host, Willow Red Raven. We will eventually have others, but she's the only one who had time at the moment. God, that just makes it sound so sad. Jeez, I do have a life, you know. Do you? No, but that's okay. Moving on. So, this is a movie news show where we take all the bigger stories of Monday, or, you know, the last two days, and compile them together. Similar-ish to the format of Collider Movie Talk, so... You know, go check them out if you want to see a professional do this. If you want to see a whole bunch of amateurs go at it, or you like the Rorschach thing, or the music behind us, that's fine too. So, our first story is from Monday, yesterday, 8 7. Stating, while a sequel to Wonder Woman has already been slated for December 13th, 2019 with Patty Jenkins in return to return as director, Forbes is now reporting that we'll be getting even more Wonder Woman in the DCEU. The outlet states that Gal Gadot is expected to reprise her role as Wonder Woman in the upcoming production of Flashpoint, the Flash's solo movie that was announced at this past, at this past year's Comic-Con. This year's Comic-Con, people. This year's. Not this past year's. Anyhow. <laughs> Fans of the series in which the movie will be based shouldn't be surprised by her inclusion in the movie is currently scheduled to be released sometime in 2020. Willow, your thoughts? <sighs> okay, yeah, alright. We kind of expected that she'll be used in other movies, but I'm just more upset that we're going to see Flashpoint again. And why are you upset that we're going to see Flashpoint? Well, haven't we already seen this story done by someone else? Are you Animated? Afraid? Oh, well... The general movie going audience would not know what Flashpoint is, unless the Flash uh, TV show did it, and even then, that's still well, a niche audience, whether they want to admit it or not. Oh, well, I'm a, I'm a bit of a nerd, I don't know. But it will see interesting if they are going to stay similar to the story, her teaming up with Aquaman. It could be interesting. Because originally, before they put this movie back to square one, this was supposed to be a... Flash cyborg movie almost kind of I don't want to use the term buddy cop but that's the closest thing I can equate it to then all that shit with Ben Affleck and Batman happened so it seems right. like if they maybe want to set this universe not in modern day a flashpoint storyline would be a good way to do it as for my thoughts on one of its involvement it's not weird in comics to go, oh, Flash, oh, oh, hey, look, there's Wonder Woman, hey, there's Aquaman, hey, there's Superman, hey, there's the whole Justice League in this Flash comic. Weird, it's not called Justice League. No, it's com comics. If someone is threatening the world, it stands to reason. If Superman goes, oh, shit, Flash is in trouble. There he goes. Oh, hey, Superman's That's... here now. Yay. <laughs> Very true. That's why it's called the DC Universe. It's everybody in the same place and roughly in the same timelines and that's how they've been doing a lot of the movies yeah so they can do this not that big of a deal i agree it is not that big of a deal. so moving on uh thr is reporting the hollywood reporter for those of you who don't know hollywood reporter reports that that's why they make it thr because that just sounded weird the hollywood report reports that uh, Marwan Kenzeri, the actor who's part of the all-star cast of the upcoming Murder on the Orient Express, I do want to see that, is in negotiations to star as the villain Jafar in Disney's live-action remake of Aladdin. Will Smith is top-lining the pick as the genie, while Meta Moussad will play the title character of Aladdin, Meta being a relative unknown. And we all know who Aladdin is, and the street rat pretends to be Prince in order to Win the hand of a princess played by the pink ranger, Naomi Scott. Because remember, kids, if you lie about who you are, you get to fuck royalty. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. But that's not what our opinions are on. Uh, our opinions are on Marwan Kizadari as uh, Jafar. I mean, I'm going to have to see more Orient Express to get an opinion because I don't recognize the name right off the bat. But... Well, for Disney casting unknowns, you know, give people their SAG cards, their breaks, whatever. How about your thoughts? 
that's exactly what I was gonna say. It is an unknown name. Quick Google image search. I think I see why they picked him, and it could be very interesting to see what they're gonna do. Especially since he's so much younger than I pictured Jafar being as a child, watching this movie. Alrighty. And moving right on along for Monday's bullshit or cool shit, or cool shit or bullshit, either or, potato potato. Uh, with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 arriving on Blu-ray today, digitally, August 8th, buy it now, not sponsored, and later this month on actual Blu-ray, uh, Collider Steve Frosty Weintraub recently sat down to chat with James Gunn and got a couple updates on plans for the third Guardians film. The director revealed that it'll be a little more than a year before they get started on filming, and though they haven't announced their release date yet, Gunn knows the general basic time when they'll start shooting. Gunn also reveals the third movie will essentially be the third act of a trilogy and promises a lot of answers. Uh, then we have... Oh. And I guess... Yeah, actually, now let's just tackle this one first. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on Gunn saying Guardians 3, despite their fact involvement in Avengers 3 and 4, that this is more the third act of their story? Uh, I'm gonna call cool shit, since like you said, this is taking place after Avengers 4, which he did uh, say, um, I'm gonna say cool shit, because he also, I saw him hinting about on his social media that this is going to definitely set off a new seismic shift in the way Marvel Universe is gonna be run. Um, I'm calling kind of bullshit that this is maybe the third act. You know, your plays can be more than three acts, people. Come on. Yes, but... I'd call this more fourth act, seeing as they are dealing with cosmic beings in Avengers 3 and 4 now. I don't know how deep their involvement is, but given Gamora Nebula's connection to Thanos, I think oh. just writing off the Avengers stories as not an act in their story at all is a little bullshit, but I will call cool shit overall that we are getting Guardians 3 and it starts filming sometime next year, which would surprise no one. And sticking with the Guardians theme, celebrate the Blu-ray release of, uh, you know, Guardians Volume 2. James Gunn and Marvel released a trippy new music video for the song Inferno, a special song created especially for the Blu-ray that's co-written by James Gunn and scores done by Tyler Bates. Video stars the entire cast of the Guardians alongside David Hasselhoff, with Gunn and his brother as well as Guillermo del Toro all making cameos as well. Willow, we just watched the video. Cool shit or bullshit? Or acid oh. shit? Yeah, it, trippy was definitely the right word to use. I mean... Uh, I'm gonna go bullshit. I'm sorry. I, 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 I... You, you're not buying it? Oh, uh, no. I want my I want my I want you? my three minutes back. <laughs> you want your three minutes back? <laughs> yes, oh. I do. <laughs> I'm calling cool shit just because I like picking all the people out. Go like, yeah, there they are, yay! Yeah, yeah. This video is gonna do very well in Germany. Not not our video, <laughs> that video. <laughs> just just making a clarifying statement here. They fucking love David Hasselhoff. <laughs> oh, God, that was a lot of chest hair in that video. And one of the cooler things to drop yesterday were Ryan Reynolds dropping pictures of Cable for Deadpool 2. I personally enjoy the pictures. It's just, hey, this is how the character looks. I have some people going, I've seen some cosplayers have a better Cable. But guess what? If it's in the movie, that's the now canon outfit. <laughs> um, I'm a fan of the teddy bear on the leg. He, he looks like a battle-hardened dude kind of what Cable is. Uh, he's got the silver streak in the hair, all that stuff. Looks very scarred in the face. He, he looks like he can play off Ryan Reynolds very well, is what I'm trying to say. Yes. I agree. So, Definitely calling cool shit on this one. Calling cool shit? What about the design very. of his character do you like? Um, I, I do like um, what seems like what they're going to be doing with this. From I don't know too much about the character my, from Cable myself, but Definitely. It looks like someone is going to play very well with um, balancing off with Deadpool. Time travel. Time travel. That's all I have to say. Time travel. 
And any story about Monday would not be complete, except we're not bloody heathens and go off of estimates. We give you the actuals here. Uh, let's talk about the box office. At the number one spot debuting this week, we have The Dark Tower bringing in a domestic total of $19,153,698. And an estimated production budget of $60 million. What are your thoughts on the number one spot of what's being called arguably the lowest weekend for movies? Uh, they must be dead on because I didn't even hear about this movie until yesterday. But I do live under a rock. And that's why you're doing this show, so you're not under the rock as much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I think it might be able to make its money back, but I see it maybe having a 45-50% drop-off next week, especially with Annabelle coming out later, and then movies after it, and it doesn't have that great of a critical reception, so I see this one dropping out fairly quickly, because we are getting into that lull of kids are now back and getting back to school and all that stuff. So summer season's technically over. We're getting like the lull of movies, and like, unlike the number two spot, Dunkirk bringing seventeen million one hundred thirty-five thousand two hundred forty-six dollars, dropping thirty-five percent from last week, down from its number one spot. But it did get put in two hundred sixty-six extra theaters. You people don't get this other places. Um. Bring its total gross to one hundred thirty-three million. $90,984 on a $100 million budget, meaning it is just now started to make money for the studio, as I kind of predicted. With its third week in the box office, I see it making the studio at least a little bit of money. And with schools coming back in a session, I can see maybe history teachers winning the favor of their students by going, hey, let's all go on a field trip to the movies and World War II shit. Thoughts? Yeah. On Dunkirk uh, being knocked out of the number one position. Just barely, mind you. Yeah, just barely, but it is week three. It's definitely going to stay up there for a while, I think. Because it is going to have quite a big pull. And but... unfortunately, going down from its number two spot to the number three spot, people ironically seeing the Emoji movie making <sighs> another $12,005,409, bringing it total to 49 million 107 thousand 130 not 133 113 dollars on an estimated 50 million dollar budget uh sony still hemorrhaging money on this movie even if they do cross that threshold because generally theater chains do take a third hence why i said dunkirk's now in the money making territory so the emoji movie still hasn't quite made the studio its money hopefully that drop off just gets more and more and it Dude, we don't need another emoji movie. You, you tell no. studios with your wallet what you want to see and what you don't. <laughs> Quick thoughts on the emoji movie still being in the top three. Why? That sums it up. <laughs> uh, moving on to number four spot, the last week's number three. We have Girls Trip. Dropping another 42%. That's about average. To a weekend gross of eleven million four hundred one thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars, getting taken out of sixty-six theaters. Uh, its total gross is eighty-five million four hundred twenty-six thousand five hundred fifteen dollars on an estimated nineteen million dollar budget. This movie has made Universal its budget back and then some. Thoughts on Girls Trip doing this well? Not really. I'm I'm surprised it did as well as it did though. I mean, I've yet to see it, but it's definitely on my radar because I have heard critics say this is good. Um, one of them going as far as to say it's the best comedy since 22 Jump Street, and I absolutely love the Jump Street franchise. Yeah. All right, then. And moving on to number five spot, we have Kidnap, starring Halle Berry, opening with the measly $10,016,323. With they won't give us its budget, which kind of concerns me. 
<laughs> so thoughts of Halle Berry's new movie debuting at number five with ten million dollars. I don't know too much about this one to really have that much of an opinion. Now, this is a movie I haven't heard of until it was coming out. And rounding out the number six spot, we have, obviously, Spider-Man Homecoming with $8,845,978, getting taken out of 509 theaters, bringing its total domestic gross, I believe, to... Two hundred ninety-four million nine hundred fifty-three thousand seven hundred fifty-four dollars on an estimated budget of one hundred seventy-five million dollars. Thoughts on Spider-Man's momentum still being in the top ten? Hell, even barely just being kicked out of the top five. Hmm. No, I was glad to see it's still going strong. And for the actual worldwide numbers, Spider-Man has pulled in. Six hundred seventy-three million nine hundred seventy-nine thousand two hundred ninety-three dollars worldwide. Hmm. So this movie has made its money back. Yes. <laughs> it maybe hasn't hit as hard as say Guardians Volume Two, which is just a testament to the Marvel credit. Uh, no one cared about Guardians. Spider-Man's still up there in the most recognizable comic book character of all time. It goes Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. In that order. <laughs> Yeah, and they would no. We're we're gonna take those weird things from the middle of space, and that's gonna make more money. All I'm saying is Disney is loving that they're gonna make the money off of merchandising, and Sony's probably pretty happy about them getting their chunk of change back. Uh, moving on to the number seven spot, we have Atomic Blonde dropping three places from its number four spot last week, getting added to 22 more theaters, but getting a steep 55% drop-off. Um, I actually saw this movie this weekend. I am part of the $8,157,555, bringing its domestic gross total to $34,037,930 30, $34, on a budget of $30 million. What's your thoughts on Atomic Blonde being this high and or low on the list, in your opinion? I mean, out of what's on here, I don't know, maybe it could, I wish it would be a little bit higher, because this is actually one of the few movies that's on my radar that I still want to see. Yeah, like, the movie, admittedly, does have its issues. Um, okay. But... Like, it's still more of an action movie than some people went out to be. So, like, some people expected maybe John Wick levels of action. Because this is one of the guys who did make the original John Wick. But, for what it was, I did enjoy it. There's a nice twist at the end that I didn't see coming. Even knowing there was a twist ending or multiple endings to a movie. Even though there weren't really multiple endings, but whatever. <laughs> so, let's see if Atomic Blonde's made any. So it's worldwide totals at 46, almost 47, a budget of 30. Okay, so it has to make it, okay, it's barely making money. So whatever it makes after this week should be the majority of whatever money it takes in. I'm guessing maybe around four-ish million next week. So. It's gonna scathe by, but as even my mom pointed out, even if the movie isn't super great, um, you need to tell studios, hey, we want more chicks who kick ass in the lead. If you you know you want to see more movies with female leads that kick the ever loving shit out of people like Daredevil, and that's not an exaggeration. That happens in this movie. <laughs> Twenty five cuts in that scene, by the way. You'll know what I'm. You film people will know what I'm talking about. And in the number 8 spot, moving from the 16 spot last week all the way to number 8 is Detroit, getting a 1,934.8% increase in revenue over last week when it was thrown into almost 3,000 more theaters. Detroit, of course, making $7,125,601 on a $34 million budget. Now, Detroit is a movie that's on my radar. It's maybe going for the Oscar bait a little bit. 
and from what I've heard, it maybe shouldn't have been called Detroit. It should have been called something hotel. I forget off the top of my head, but it is set during the De Detroit riots, and I guess Detroit was a snappier title than something motel or hotel. So thoughts on Detroit going up eight spots after being put into wide release. I would say good for them. Again, this was another movie that I had not heard of very much, so looks like it's starting to gain my interest. So, again, and... that one might be on my to-see list. Mm -hmm. And moving on to number 9 spot, taking another 40% drop, getting thrown out of 670 theaters, making only $130 million, $449,389 million domestic on a $150 million budget is, of course, War for the Planet of the Apes, which is struggling at the box office despite the critical and fan praise and good word of mouth of this movie. Thoughts of War of the Planet of the Apes following three more spots to number nine? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of not surprised. Why is that? I don't know. It just it was up against a lot of other things. I mean, we've got the other stuff up here that, you know, it's just slowly going to work its way down, I think. But it's still in the top ten. I mean... It... Just now, I believe, probably making money, because... You gotta figure theaters take a third, so it had to make $200 million just to break even on the production budget. It has surpassed that, but then you think of the marketing budget, so you think around now is where the movie maybe just started making money. <laughs> So it's not that it lost the studio money, it's just maybe not as doing well as they hoped. Thoughts on my thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you got it. <laughs> okay. A nod to move on would be nice. This segment's <laughs> long. <laughs> Because <laughs> I want to showcase some movies maybe people haven't heard of. God damn it. And dropping from its number 7 spot to the number 10 spot we have Despicable Me 2, not 2, Despicable Me 3. Three. Uh, bring in another $5,429,735, getting thrown out of 585 theaters. Bringing its total domestic gross to $240 million. $920,645 on an estimated $80 million budget. Despicable Me, despite the fact maybe not being as popular as the Minions movie or its predecessor, still pulling in money. Thoughts on Despicable Me still making that much money? No, again, it's uh, just finishing up the summer season. It was a big kids movie. Not surprised. Wow. And for an update, Despicable Me 3 has made $885 million worldwide. So this is a step down from the Minions movie, which made over a billion dollars. But what are your thoughts of the Spickle Me franchise almost putting out two movies in a row to cross the billion dollar mark? I mean, this one won't, but it got pretty damn close. It's my personal really. thoughts on... Why Despicable Me is still probably bringing the money you have parents going. Anything but the fucking emoji movie. Anything but the fucking emoji movie. I will take you <laughs> minions. <laughs> Fuck it. I say it. Those things destroyed my life, but I will take minions over oh, the yeah. emoji movie. You gotta settle for minions. Ugh. And... Moving on from moving down from its number nine spot to the number eleven, one of my favorites of this list, Baby Driver, bringing another two million five hundred seventy-three thousand nine hundred fifty-six dollars, bringing its domestic total to ninety-seven million seventy-four thousand eight hundred eighty-six dollars with a thirty-four million dollar budget. It has made its money, which I'm glad for, but it should be making more money. God damn it! So thoughts on Baby Driver still pulling in money. I'm glad to see that, and they will be getting a little bit more because it is one I do intend to see before the, it gets pulled out of my local theaters. Because it is now in its sixth week in theaters. 
So if you yeah. have not seen Baby Driver out of all these movies, I'd suggest maybe It in Detroit out of theirs, but that's a different segment for a later time in the video. <laughs> Sneak preview. And dropping from its number eight spot last week to number 12, we have Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, bringing in $2,395,377, dropping by 62.3%. Bring its domestic total to $36,134,260 on an estimated $177.2 million budget. Thoughts on Valerian bombing? Not surprised, sadly. Yeah, this movie, I heard cool concept, but the dialogue was just terrible. Which, as we know... You need good dialogue for your movie to work. Yeah. And moving on from that, and the number 13 spot jumping down from its number 10 spot last week, we have another comic book movie, Wonder Woman, bringing in $2,286,334, getting thrown out of another 344 theaters, Bringing its domestic total to three hundred ninety-nine million four hundred thirty-two thousand four hundred thirteen dollars, with an estimated budget of one hundred forty-nine million dollars. Thoughts on Wonder Woman still getting this kind of drop? Your buds? Not surprised. Not surprised. Not surprised. The superhero movies are always going to be the big pull. That's going to be the first thing on everyone's mind. Of ooh, let's go to a movie. Which one haven't we seen yet? And maybe something about the. Rumors going around that Warner Brothers is going to re-release Wonder Woman in theaters to probably A, get it over a billion dollars gross to the box office, and B, so it can get some Oscar buzz. Probably might have reinvigorated some of these viewers. Now, the number 14 spot we have the Amazon produced, The Big Sick. I heard it's more the performances that made this movie worth watching rather than the actual plot. Philo, your <laughs> thoughts on The Big Sick bringing in Two million one hundred sixty-three thousand twenty-one dollars, getting thrown out of five hundred eighty-four theaters, and its overall domestic gross thirty-three million nine hundred twenty-seven thousand four hundred forty-nine. Again, this was one of the lesser-known titles I didn't know much about. So, uh, one more time, you got a little fuzzy. Uh, this was one of the lesser-known titles I didn't know much about, so I don't know what to, if I got an opinion on this one. And not surprised that it's this low on the list, seeing as it is in its seventh week in the box office. And debuting at the number 15 spot, we have Jeb Harry Met Sajil, a movie I haven't personally heard of, making $1.284 million. And we don't get its budget, so... How about this, I'm assuming foreign film, debuting at the number 15 spot with $1,284,740. Mm. I don't know, it really depends on the situations. Foreign films tend to rarely go over well here. At least in circles that, in my cities. Fair enough, this is a romantic comedy. Uh... As one might guess. Playing off of the title when Harry met Sally. So that is it for the box office. Now to get to the portion you actually wanted to get to. Tuesday stuff, but you know, this is my fucking show and I can do what I want. I also probably have time codes for you to skip around where you please. So if you don't want to hear me give movies that deserve some love, like Detroit and hell even Job Harry met Sajil, some love your baby driver he just move on so now news from today we have two big casting announcements happened yesterday for disney's live action adaptation of the lion king it's not live action it's not live action it's animated it's animated it's animated there is no people in the movie it's animated but whatever first we learned from the hollywood reporter that elfrey woodard who plays Cottonmouth's sister and Luke Cage, who's joined the cast is Sarabi Simba's mother, and completing the pride of actors playing the family that includes Donald Glover as Simba, James Earl Jones, and James Earl Jones as Mufasa. 
The rap then broke news that Captain America Civil War actor John Connie had snagged the role of Rafiki, the baboon who serves as the royal advisor to Mufasa. The two actors are now part of an ensemble that includes Seth Rogen as Pumbaa, Bill Eichner as Timon, John Oliver as Zazu with the movie, also recently adding Shutel Ejiofor as the villain Scar, with a rumor still out there that Beyonce will both write to music for and star as Nala in The Lion King. So, thoughts on these people joining the cast? No, well, looks good. Um, I... That, that almost fills out the whole cast now, right? Yeah, that fills out basically the entire main cast if everyone's talks go through. Yeah, and it looks good. Uh, Alfrey Woodard, I'm not too surprised, yeah. is joining. And for those who don't recognize the name, John Kinney, um, he's Black Panther's father in Civil Civil War. So, he's an older man. I haven't seen much of his work other than Civil War. So, but he does seem to have, like, this older African authority to him, which, you know, being set in the jungle, works. I'm not just saying that because he's black before any of you say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he had to play in the movie. He did it well. And we also had... On Monday, Netflix announced that the streaming giant made their first acquisition in the company's history by purchasing Millar World, the company founded by Mac Millar, who is a legendary comic creator, such kind of characters and stories such as Kick-Ass, Kingsman, Oldman Logan, Wanted, and my personal favorite, Nemesis. Yes, even more than Kingsman, even though that movie is beautiful. <laughs> The company will now turn their eye to developing franchises through films, series, and kid shows that will only be available on Netflix. So, what do you think of Netflix doing something only Disney and Warner Brothers have done in acquiring a comic company? Uh, I'm really excited to see what they're going to do here. What particularly are you excited about? Well, it definitely looks like they can launch to be able with this whole comic um, acquisition to do a whole new um, exclusive Netflix superhero world. That's definitely going to open a lot of doors. And I'm also excited to see, for my family, new kids programming. <laughs> I don't know which one of Mark Millar's world's <laughs> uh, comics can be used for kids programming, but well, Netflix will probably find a way to make it work. And in the same vein as Netflix, maybe in a response to this, after their deal with Netflix ends in 2019, Disney will be pulling all of its movies, maybe even properties, off of Netflix and moving them to their own streaming service. Now, I think they might keep their Netflix verse of Marvel characters there, the Defenders, because, you know, they have too much of a good thing going. But it's Disney, and it's not like they're incapable of producing a show if they wanted to. So thoughts on Disney wanting to make their own streaming service? And uh, pulling out of the deal with Netflix once it's done. I mean, it feels like Netflix and Disney just recently got together, but time passes quickly for me. But another streaming service I have to sign up for? I don't know. I mean, I kind of think this is the way the world's heading because we have, yes. even with CBS and the CW, them having either their own apps or services of like, hey, we have these shows, give us your money, and you can either watch without ads or, you know, you get this exclusive programming only here. So eventually, I believe TV is going to become more a la carte all around and traditional television might start dying off as much of a weird sentence as that is to say thoughts yeah you're right I just didn't expect it all to happen this quickly with everything going to paper network so to speak mhm mm and moving on to the segment I like to call What to Watch This Weekend, 
New this week, the only thing you should be caring about is Annabelle Creation sporting a whopping 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. I personally wasn't a fan of the Annabelle standalone movie, but I am a fan of what I've seen of The Conjuring and what I've seen of The Conjuring 2. Like, I didn't dislike the standalone Annabelle movie, but seeing how she played in The Conjuring just made it seem better. And from what I understand, this falls in more of the second Ouija movie situation where the first movie's either absolute shit or just okay. And then this one was like, wow, a horror movie can be a good movie. Who would have thought? <laughs> Is Annabelle Creation on your radar? Oh, well, looks like it's going to have to be. Because it's a horror movie, and we're only two months out from the Halloweeny. Yeah, we are, aren't we? Uh, I said weenie for all the five-year-olds out there who are going to laugh every time I say weenie. <laughs> <laughs> and still in theaters, my personal suggestions are Dunkirk, Baby Driver, Atomic Blonde, Detroit, Girls Trip, Spider-Man Homecoming, and War of the Planet of the Apes. Is there anything that maybe we went over during the weekend box office that isn't on this list that you might suggest for people? No, I think we got it all together. I know I'll be seeing Baby Driver and Atomic Blonde really soon. So. Yep, and I cannot stress enough, maybe go see Planet of the Apes, Detroit, or Baby Driver over these other ones. Even though Dunkirk is a really good movie. If you can pay attention for five minutes. <laughs> I have to say that because there were people who found the movie hard to follow. It's not that hard to follow. I swear. <laughs> Anyhow, moving on to... Oh, and uh, are there any personal movies that you think are underrated that people should check out at home? Not that I can think of. So you don't have a favorite movie that maybe the mass moving going audience hasn't seen? Me? No. Like, I would suggest, if you can get your hands on it, I'm not sure if the Blu-ray's out in America yet. If you haven't had the chance, go see Your Name, or I know definitely is out, um, Mumuro Hosoda's Boy and the Beast. Oh, that was good. I know. That's why I'm suggesting it. <laughs> yes, I'm agreeing with you. Go see that one. Or get it. Pick God, yeah, let's be so condescending about it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> go cry in the corner. <laughs> so, no movies that you want to tell the people to go see? No. Nah. No, nah, I'll just agree with you. Okay. She's just agreeing, so I move on. <laughs> if I just do what he says, maybe he'll let me out of the basement. Please let me out of the basement. <laughs> Legal disclosure, she is not in the basement. She is not even in the same state. I feel like I have to say this. Just in case. <laughs> No, there's probably some of you being out there like, well, that's what someone who has someone in their basement would say. <laughs> oh, you're talking yourself into a deeper hole. Just keep going. Well, we all know every guy wants to go into deep hole. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, moving on to Tuesdays. Bullshit or cool shit. The Hollywood Reporting is reporting that Oscar-nominated actress Ruth Nega has signed on. I said Nega, N-E-G-G-A, before anyone says anything. <laughs> Ruth Nega, that's her name, has signed on to star along Brad Pitt in the sci-fi epic Ad Astra, directed by James Grave. The movie is described as an adventure film about one man's journey across a lawless and unforgiving solar system to find his missing father, a renegade scientist who poses a threat to all mankind. Nega's role is being kept, 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 underwrapped, underwrapped. Nega's role is being kept underwrapped at the moment, but in the Hollywood Reporter's report, 
the trade also revealed that Tommy Lee Jones is also attached to the project in an unknown role. Thoughts on Nega and Tommy Lee Jones starring in a sci-fi epic movie alongside Brad Pitt. Looks cool to me. I am not too familiar with this actress, but I am calling cool shit and hopes for optimism. I also say cool shit under the guise of optimism, and you were really trying not to say her name because you want me to get all the comments of it sounds like you were saying the other word. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not! It's how it's spelled! <laughs> And continuing with the Hollywood Reporter, they're reporting that Becca Thomas has been tapped to direct Malignant, a sci-fi action thriller that James Wan is producing for 20th Century Fox. Malignant is based on Boom Studio, comic titled Malignant Man that Wan co-created, with the story focusing on Alex Gates, a patient dying of cancer until it's discovered that his malignant tumor is actually a mysterious alien parasite. Imbued with incredible powers and a renewed purpose, Gates is tasked with fighting a secret army lurking behind the veils of society. Cool shit or bullshit? Huh. Um, maybe cool shit? I mean, I I'm a huge sci-fi fan, so I I'm gonna call cool shit. I think James Wan might have read and or seen the show Parasite, and I'm still on board with, hey, this tumor actually isn't a tumor, it's an alien parasite that gave him powers. I'm just saying he maybe saw a parasite or read it and went, yeah, let's make this my it. own movie without actually using the word parasite. <laughs> We're just gonna call it's it malignant cool. instead. <laughs> so, yeah, I call cool shit on that. And with that, we have hit the end of our show. Willow, if you want to plug your social media, where can people find you? Or do you just want to be a mysterious Red Raven? I am at Willow Red Raven in any place you can find me. Because likes fuel her existence, apparently. <laughs> likes yeah, and follows and retweets. You got it. Cool hipster mom who knows how to hang with the cool kid. What? <laughs> 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 let's not <laughs> let's not go there <laughs> and you can find me places that should be kind of obvious and if you can't find them well I'm sorry for your loss <laughs> of intelligence <laughs> I know call your audience stupid they'll come back every week I swear I know shut the you're the one telling them they're stupid. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> There's only one person here, and it's me. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you all for watching, and until next time, bye bye I just realized I totally ripped off Collider's ending. And we're gonna break on three! One, two, three! Brock! <laughs>